Welcome back to Bourbon Country Reacts. Hey guys, this is Keith. That's Dustin. No. Yeah, you are. I know. I'm the bourbon guy. Okay. That's the bourbon guy. I'm kind of the music guy. Right. We got another broad from Holly. This one's Holly. By the that way. That sure is an interesting label. I can't probably see it. Now they can see it. So, it has... Now, one... Part of the label's got, like, tie-dye colors. It's true, on the sides. And the front of the label has... I don't know if you guys know who the rainbows are, but it looks like one of their buses. Like a picture of it printed on there. The little card is even... Tie-dye. Yeah. yeah. Rainbow tie-dye. So, Holly did this intentionally. Did she now? Uh-huh. I would like to read you the email from Holly. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do this real quick. Um, she talks about sending us bribes, and normally she's tried them, and she tries to send us decent stuff. She's never tried this one. She has no clue what it tastes like, but what she does know is that it was named after and, proceed, and proceeds uh, from it go to restore Ken Keesley's bus further. He's, she says, if you know anything about Ken Keasley, you, I do not. you will 100% understand why I paired it with the song. LOL. <laughs> I think that means laugh out loud. It does, but I'm lost. Yep. She said, are you ready for some psychedelic country? Oh, boy. The song request, is, and we'll get into that. Uh, and this song refers to the cosmic turtle theory. Or something called the world turtle theory, if you guys know anything about what that is. There's a turtle that holds up the world. What? There's a turtle that holds up the world. What? And how a child asks what holds up the turtle. Okay. One other turtle. And, well, what holds up that turtle? Another turtle. It's turtles all the way down, kid. <laughs> what is that from? I'm not even sure. I don't remember. Okay, well, that's what we're about to experience. And, and we don't know what this bottle's going to... Holly doesn't even know. Well, we're about to tell her. Yep. <laughs> and good, Holly, you know we don't lie. Good, bad, and different. We're about to tell yep. Holly all about this if bottle. If Keith spits it out, it's your fault. All right, so Sturgill Simpson turtles all the way down. Now it makes sense, right? There's the world. I don't see the turtle. I've seen Jesus play with flames in the lake of fire. I was standing in. Met the devil in Seattle. Spent nine months inside the line. Then. Met Booty yet another time. He showed me glory in my But I swear to God was there the time I got to the eyes of my best friend. Says my son, it's all been done. Someday gonna wake up old and gray. Go and try and have some fun. Show it once to everyone. You need a greet, cheat along. Far beyond this place Where reptile aliens made a lot Cut you open and pull out all your pain Tell me how you make it legal Something that I'm making I pray Some say it might go crazy then again, it might make you go insane. Every time you take a look inside that old fable, blinded and blinded, painted by some old man in the sky. Marijuana, LSD, 
So that was a theme song for psychedelics. No shit. Like no shit. They even mentioned like four of them, right? Yeah, and, and some of them were really strong ones. Um, yeah, so there are a lot of people that, and a, and a growing number of people that Ooh. are subscribing to the theory that, and, and this all started in the '60s. You know, Timothy Leary and all that shit with LSD. Um, what? So this bus, they're trying to restore that bus. Yeah. That's on the label. Which I'm sure is owned by somebody who was a pioneer in the use of psychedelics. So there are a lot of people that subscribe to um, the theory that powerful psychedelics actually expand the mind and have a lot of uses. And actually right now, there's a resurgence of testing what they're calling microdosing uh, to use these powerful hallucinogens for a variety of therapeutic use cases ranging from treatment of PTSD to ADHD. I mean, like there's testing underway. People are, people are microdosing where they take a lot of tiny doses of LSD or psilocybin, uh, maybe mescaline, I don't know. Um, and and I, I don't know what the research is saying. It's not something that catches my attention uh, all that much. But I do know that there's a resurgence of this Recently. field and research. Yeah. Um, well, it says that the bus is a symbolic is symbolic of a time of change and encompasses a freedom we all continue to chase. Yeah, well, I so hope you think, people Are chase. they thinking like it frees the mind kind of deal? Um, probably. I would give it about a 95% chance that's what they're referring to in that little mini pamphlet there. Yeah. So this whiskey is a recruiting effort for... <laughs> LSD. Well, the the psychedelic movement, because there is kind of a movement. Never really went away. Ever been to a dead show? Uh-uh. <laughs> well, but I've heard things. If you go into a dead show with fifty thousand people wearing tie dyes, forty five of them are tripping balls. So, <laughs> legitimately, yeah. Uh, no, seems all right. Yeah. Uh, so. Let's talk about the song a little bit. Obviously, if we were on LSD, it would probably make us flip our shit. I wouldn't begin to uh, try and predict what effect that song would have if you ate some acid and watched that video. With all of that shit that was going on? Yeah. You'd be like, I'm transported to a new place, I think. I, yeah, I wouldn't begin to predict. So, interestingly, the musicianship and engineering in that song was pretty damn good. It was. And when it wasn't weird, like when they didn't like drown him out and put him in the background, he actually sounded really good. He did. Like, from a song composition standpoint, I actually kind of liked it. Yeah. I, I think that one thing that I... The one thing that keeps it from being playlist for me, there is one thing. Only one? Actually, just one, because there's a lot to like about that song. Agreed. Right? Yeah. Oh. Um, it was that the musicianship was upbeat. 
And his delivery was kind of a Chris Christopherson style downbeat. Yeah. Like at the end of the lyrics, uh huh. You know, it took you down. Yep. And uh, but it was almost like that. It was trying to do this, right? The whole song. Uh, yeah, kind of. But he always ended down here. Uh huh. And that, for me, doesn't generate a positive emotion, right? It's, you know. Uh, I don't want to feel like crap. Uh, yeah. Um, aside from that, I actually really like the song. I'd really like to go back and read the lyrics. I probably will. Go back and read the lyrics, uh, the commentary on the various religions, and, you know, his assertion that he's dosed up and, you know met or somehow understood the founders of you know all the earth's religions i mean i assume some trips can be like that but (laughs) never had one myself (laughs) so um yeah i i i want to analyze that i want to look at it um i am absolutely just because it's a drug culture thing I, I don't dismiss out of hand some of the thought that comes out of that because there's some science there's there's some philosophical brilliance to be found there from time to time mm-hmm. um, there tends to be a lot of chaff that has to be sorted to find the wheat sure um, but it, some man there there are some gems in there because it's the it's the it's the attempt at higher thinking right yes. And whether those people would have gotten to that higher level of thinking without the use of a hallucinogen, anybody's guess. I would almost guess not from the standpoint of they got all this other chatter that... Well, that's their opinion. Yeah. Right. The people who do that and believe that they have these uh, philosophical or emotional epiphanies always claim, I couldn't have gotten there on my own without the use of powerful hallucinogens. I kind of say maybe you would have, maybe you know, maybe not. Right. Right. You know, How do you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, man, we got deep. Well, the song wasn't exactly light subject material, you know? <laughs> Good job, Holly. <laughs> Making so, us get deep on the channel. Uh, why do you want to make me think? I don't want to think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You could. <laughs> Well, it's like rocks are rolling around in my head when I do. Clunk, so. clunk, clunk. <laughs> Broken bowling balls. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, those are outside. <laughs> uh, all right, tell me what you're tasting here, man. Honestly, so it's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. It's kind of basic, um, but it's 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 good. Corn sweet up front. Rolls some cinnamon and oak. Uh, it's just, it's kind of a standard bourbon. Is it a bourbon? Straight bourbon? Sure tastes like a bourbon. Yeah. So, the one thing that I would kind of note about this is, so the corn sweet hits up front. Normally, because it actually kind of is a little bit of a cinnamon bomb. Yeah. But normally when you've got a cinnamon bomb... It's on the forward. Bam. As soon as it hits your tongue, that's when you get crushed with the cinnamon. It's more in the mid towards the finish. This, it flashes in in the mid, uh-huh. like really strong, and then rolls back with the oak into the finish. And it's got a little bit of a bourbon, uh, not a bourbon, it's bourbon. It's got a little bit of a vanilla finish, too. Yeah, there is. And it's actually a pretty pleasing finish. It's growing on me. Mm-hmm. The more you drink it, the more you like it. like those psychedelics. I wouldn't know, man. Well, neither. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, this this is not bad. Oh, you could you should try it out. It's not bad. Yeah, this is this is worth buying a bottle for yourself and and uh, giving it a try. So Ken Keasley was an American novelist. His work includes sometimes a great notion, and one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Oh boy. <laughs> He was born in Colorado. Uh, he was an icon- He was an iconic figure in the '60s, 
and with the psychedelic counterculture. Yeah, I guess I nailed it. Yep. So, that's kind of neat. Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, not really my scene, but I'm, I don't care if a few bucks goes to restoring the guy's bus. Yeah. And, like I say, the whiskey's good. I mean, it's not knock your socks off good, but it's, it's definitely good. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not spit out. Like, I'd put it in a... Like, I would be willing to pay 35 to 40 bucks for this bottle. Yeah, that's right. That's and, perfect. and I'd be perfectly fine with that. Yeah. If, it, if you walked into a liquor store in Kentucky, no, in Tennessee, and this is the only bourbon they had on the shelf and you were camping, you'd pick it up. Oh, I'd buy it. Yeah. I'd buy it over a bunch of bourbons I've had. True. So, yeah. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give us a like. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Drop down in the comments. Tell us what country music we need to check out. Tell us what North American whiskeys we need to try. But we're going to pass on the LSD. Yeah, don't send that. See you guys. <laughs>